let's add a custom item to Minecraft. All right, we found ourselves back in IntelliJ once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom item to Minecraft, and this is actually a fairly straightforward process, so I would say let's just begin. In our tutorial mod package, we're going to right-click a new package called item. And then inside of there, we're going to right-click new Java class called the mod items. Now this window here will appear only if you have a GitHub repository associated with your project. If you don't have that, that's totally fine. If you do have that, you can just click add and everything will be fine. Now the mod items class is going to have a structure that is very similar to, well, future classes. And that is going to be, well, we need a deferred register where we register our items and then a public static void register method in which we register this deferred register. So there's a lot of registration going on, as you can clearly tell. So let's just start with the public static final deferred register and then the angle brackets of type item. So net Minecraft world item. And we're going to press the tab key to autocomplete this. And then it's going to immediately import this. And then we will call this items or caps. This is equal to a deferred register at create forge registries once again. So if I have the suggestion there, I can just press the tab key to autocomplete this. And then it's going to immediately import the class as well as just have it be written out. And then I can say dot items once again, autocomplete it with the tab key comma tutorial mod dot mod ID and then ended with a semicolon. So what might happen if you don't import this with the suggestions and the tab key, you know, you might have something here in red. So if there's a word that is written in red, what you can do is you can click on it and then press Alt and enter to import the class. You can see net Minecraft world item, I can just select this and then it is imported here. So that is something that can happen. If you've made a typo somewhere that might also happen. So some people, you know, sometimes have written deferred register wrong, then usually it says, you know, it says create that class, then you probably have had a typo in here somewhere because the third register is written with one F and two R's, very important. Now this deferred register, what does this do? What does this mean? Well, in the simplest terms, you can think of this as a list of your items that you're creating because we're creating, you know, a new deferred register with this, with our mod ID, so tutorial mod, and this is a register for items. So that's the general idea of this. It's just a list so Forge knows, okay, the items that we're creating with this deferred register that we're adding to it, those are all under the tutorial mod namespace so that they, you know, Forge basically knows, okay, these items belong to this mod and that's the general idea. Of course, in the background, there's way more to it, but for the time being, you can think of this as a list of all of your items. So that's the general idea. But we need to register the deferred register as well. So we need to say a public static void register. So this is a register method which has an i event bus called event bus as a parameter. And then we're going to say items dot register and then pass in the event bus as you can see. Now this method has to be called in the tutorial mod class in the constructor. And for that, what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're just going to select everything here, including the get mod event bus. We're going to right click, we're going to say refactor and then introduce a variable. And we're going to call this the event bus right here. There you go. And then we can also delete this comment right here. And then just here, we're going to say mod items dot register and then passing in the event bus. And with this, we're basically registering our mod items deferred register. And that should be fine. Now, the question is, how do we add an item? Hmm, this is going to be interesting. Well, an item is going to be a public static final registry object. Right, this one right here. So once again, auto completing with tab key, we once again have the angle brackets of type item. And then this is going to be citrine. And what is this equal to? This is equal to items. So you can see the deferred register items dot register. And then we're going to put in a string. Now what's very important is that this bus will soon change to name, which is generated automatically, you don't have to type this out very important. In this string, we basically put in the name of this item, this follows the same rules as the mod ID, lowercase underscore dash and numbers. That's it. No uppercase characters. Very important here. This has to be unique as well. So I can't have another item that has the same name basically, right? And then I can put in a comma and you can see this now changes to name. And then what I need is I need a supplier. So right, this one. So supplier is just open and close parentheses followed by the arrow here. And then we're going to say a new item. So once again, I'm going to autocomplete with the 
by pressing the tab key. And then inside we can see we need properties. So we're going to need new item dot properties. And once again, autocomplete this. And how does this work? Well, this is a builder pattern, which means that I can call different methods on these properties, you can see, and I can basically add stuff to it. So for example, I can add the tab, this is going to be the creative tab. So in here, I can put in creative mode tab, tab underscore misc, and then ending everything with a semicolon. So our citrine item is now registered. And this would already function in game. However, it doesn't have a texture yet. And of course, in this case, it also doesn't have functionality, but that's going to be fine. In later tutorials, we're basically going to see how to add, you know, more functionality to it, advanced items, stuff like that. But for the time being, the item is in game. Now, how do we add, you know, the texture and all of that? Well, for that, we need to go into the resources folder. And this is going to be very important that the entire folder structure right here is adhered to. So this is very important. Please double check this that you have everything here right in the resources folder, right click new directory called assets. Very important. In the assets folder, right click new directory called tutorial mod. This is your mod ID, make sure that it is written correctly. Inside of the folder, tutorial mod, or your mod ID, new directory called lang, L A N G. Once again, in the tutorial mod folder, new directory models. Once again, in the directory called tutorial mod or your mod ID, right click new directory called textures. Now instead of the models folder, new directory called lock in the models folder, right click new directory called item. And then we can select both the item and the block folder, and then drag them into the textures folder while holding control that will duplicate them. And then we have the first well part of this folder structure done. Now in the length folder, we're going to right click new file called en underscore us dot json. Very important that this is written correctly. Once again, please double check the spelling on this. And the en underscore us json file is needed for translating our items. Because right now, if we were to enter the game, the citrine item would be called something like item dot tutorial mod dot citrine, which of course isn't quite the you know, it's quite a mouthful and it doesn't really work. So in the en underscore us json file, what do we need? Well, we need the curly brackets, and then we can basically translate stuff. So we're gonna start with quotation marks item dot tutorial mod dot citrine. Uh, colon citrine. So what is this? Well, first of all, we're trying to translate an item, our mod ID, and then the name of the item. This should not be too crazy to understand. We have an item, it's called citrine, and is registered under the tutorial mod mod ID. That's pretty much all that there is to it. So this is the way that the non localized name works. This is the translation key, so to speak. And then this is the translated name. And that's actually pretty much all that there is to it. In the tutorial mod example here in the entire series, we're only going to use the en underscore us json file. However, of course, this is the reason why this is used, you can always so use different files for this, and basically translate your mod to different languages, right next, we need an item model. So in our models item folder, right click new file called the citrine dot json, and I'm going to type this out once in the future, we're going to copy a lot of stuff over. All of this, by the way, is available to you in the description below GitHub repository and individual gist as well. So you you don't have to type everything out yourself, you can also copy some stuff over whatever the case may be the citrine JSON model file. So how does this look? Well, first of all, curly brackets, and then I'm gonna, you know, type this out. And I'm gonna explain. So we have a parent here of type item slash generated, and then comma textures, colon, curly bracket, layer zero, colon, tutorial mod colon item slash citrine. So what the frick is this craziness? Well, first of all, the parent here simply determines how the item is displayed when you hold it in your hand. This is displayed just like any other item in your hand. So basically, you take the item texture and sort of extrude it a little bit, so to give it a 3d kind of look. And that's basically the general idea of how this is going to be displayed. The textures here is actually very interesting. We're going to ignore for the time being the layer zero, we're just going to say, okay, this is layer zero, the definition of our texture, that's going to be fine. Well, where is this texture located? Well, it is located under item slash citrine. Hmm, that's very strange. Okay, what does this really mean? Well, I'm going to copy over the texture into the item folder right here. And now it should be 
more apparent what this means. What this means is tutorial mod, meaning we're going to take a look at the assets tutorial mod folder. And we're going to take a look at the textures folder. And then we're going to take inside of there, we're going to search for item slash citrine. So item folder slash citrine. That's the entire magic of the item model JSON file. It's not actually that complicated. This is simply what all of this means. So in theory, yes, you could just add another craziness over here. And I could add a folder that is named this, put the citrine in there, and it would still work as long as this entire directory structure is adhered to. So that's literally all that there is to it. Now, one more thing about the textures, and that is going to be the credits file. So pretty much all of the textures are done by nano attack. So first of all, thank you very much. And I have linked this if you want to use the same textures in an open repository so that you know, it has so other people have access to it, make sure the textures are distributed by this license, just basically add this file to your project or your repository and they're going to be fine just follow the license and then everything should work fine so that's just a very important thing as well right but that is pretty much the json file here and this points to this texture and now actually we have everything we need for an item so i guess let's see if it works all right finds us in minecraft so let's see in the miscellaneous tab at the very bottom we should have there it is the citrine item and it is in game and it looks freaking amazing. So once again, textures done by nano attack link is also in the description below, by the way, to his Fiverr page, I can just highly recommend it. It's actually I, I really like the textures. So in future tutorials, we're gonna see more textures. They are freaking amazing, right? That's actually how easy it can be to add an item. But we're not done yet. Because I had several people who had issues with well, how now do I add a second item? Do I have to make another class? Of course not. This definitely points to, well, maybe you don't know Java quite as well as you should. However, I will still show how you can add a second item. It is incredibly easy. What you do is you copy the already existing registry object. So I select everything, control C, control V. Now I have to rename the field here to raw citrine, for example, and then we're gonna do the same here, raw underscore citrine. Now the second item is created. I now have to go into the en underscore us JSON file. I'm once again gonna copy this and I'm just going to paste it in right here. So we're going to have the raw underscore citrine, and this is going to be the raw citrine. So now the translation is in there as well. I now copy the JSON file. The way that I do this is I drag it into the same folder while holding control, and we're going to rename this to raw underscore citrine, and then the same thing here, raw underscore citrine. Then I will copy over the raw citrine texture, and that's it. The second item now also added. That's actually how easy it is to add a second item as well. You don't have to have another mod items class. You don't have to have another register method. None of this, just a new field. That is all that there is to it. So if that was really a part of the confusion, really points to a little bit of needed experience in terms of Java. I can highly recommend my Java introduction for Minecraft and Hightail modding. I will link this in the top right corner. This can definitely only help you because a solid Java foundation is going to help you, especially with the more advanced stuff that's going to come later in the later tutorials. Highly recommend it. But let's just see if the raw citrine has also been added. All right, we found in Minecraft once more, and let's see if... There it is, the raw citrine, and doesn't it just look freaking amazing? I really, really like it. And yeah, that's actually how easy it is to add not only one, but two items to Minecraft. Right, once again, all of the code is available to you in the GitHub repository and in individual gist as well, all linked in the description below, so no worries there. But that would already be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So yeah.